I was just I was just practicing in my uh, meeting simulator. Uh, it's pretty cool. I can show it to you later if you behave. Uh, so you're probably now wondering who's this girl? What does she know about VR? And why does she have a funny accent? <laughs> so my name is Naomi Ferreira. Um, namaste. Uh, and uh, I am from Spain. I have a master's degree in computer science. I also have two more degrees in, in hardware and software from Spain and Ireland. And I really like testing. I really like new technologies. And I really like VR. Uh, I'm right now a senior software developer in tests for Netis Games. This is a Chinese company. I don't know if you have heard of it. Um, it's pretty cool, by the way. And I also work in these other companies and different roles, testing and developing, and um, wearing different hats, like some of people will, will call it. So I hope everybody knows in here what's virtual reality. Um, just to give you a little definition, uh, it's all about creating virtual worlds uh, that are immersive. And uh, this thing here uh, is called the sort of demo place. And you probably can tell why is this. It's the first VR registered device. Uh, this device uh, was created in 1968. So you can probably tell um, how old VR is. Many people think that VR is a new technology, but it's not at all. Um, so um, my goal for this talk is, first of all, for all us to learn a little bit about virtual reality, and also to um, get some conversation starting for the networking bits about what's VR and how can we use it, how can we test on it. And also, hopefully, to keep you all awake, <laughs> because it's not the best time for uh, listening to anybody. And first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about what we are, the devices, and then we'll go into what's important for us as testers. And also, um, we'll get to see what the different type of testings are and how can we apply them into VR. And also, how can we get started with VR, and a little bit about the future. So right now, there's two main type of um, devices, which is uh, phone devices and uh, headsets. So the phone devices is something like this. It's also the cardboard. And there's two main types as well between the phones. One are the ones that you have a clicker inside, and the other is the one that you don't have a clicker inside. So you have to come up with a way of clicking into objects if you need that. The headsets are usually um, not only the device, but also handsets. And the hands can do different, um, uh, you can have different buttons in the hands, so you can do different actions. Um, and the headset itself will, will be usually more powerful than the phone ones. Then I also call other devices. We will talk about that in future health testing, so what else is happening um, within virtual reality. So what's important in virtual reality for us as testers? So first of all, uh, you're going to have a lot of objects around you. So the visibility of the objects that are important for the users and how can you reach those objects is very important in VR. It's something that we have to take into account. Because yeah, the application looks great, but the user cannot reach the object. And then there's another things about the scales, the colors, and sound. All of this is super important in VR because it can create different experiences. So for example, if you have a lot of objects that are way bigger than you, you can feel like you're small. And also you can change the size of those objects to get the feeling that you're shrinking or growing. Uh, colors, lighting, shadows can also change the experience. So it can make the same room uh, feel like some safe space or some dangerous, uh, scary um, area. The sound is really, really important in VR. Uh, I can't stress that uh, ha uh, hard enough because you get a 360 degrees experience. So maybe something is happening and is behind you. How can the user tell? Usually it's done by either some kind of dialogue or sound that is happening behind. So you will turn your head. 
motion sickness uh, is basically what happens to you in the boats when you're sailing and you feel like a bit nauseous. Uh, this issue is uh, unique from VR because what the user see and what the user feel is not the same thing. The user may be static and it can be seen like you're moving. Uh, so this is very important that it's well tested in VR. And usually we have um, we have for, for this th type, of, uh, type of things not to happen, uh, some solutions that are available online that you, you can look for how to avoid motion sickness in Google and you find them. Uh, like for example, uh, being in a static cabin and having uh, the objects, making sure they're not blurry, having a high frame uh, rate. And also the threshold for motion sickness is not the same for everybody. So uh, if you have someone in your team that is particularly sensitive to this, you should ask this person to, to do the testing on, on the sickness, uh, if, if there's movement involved in your application. In my case, that's my mom. <laughs> Poor woman has a lot of patience, and she always does the motion testing for me. Uh, then again, uh, the quality of the materials and the lights are very, very important to create different experiences and to make the world really immersive. So the more, the higher quality the materials are, the higher um, function the lights and the shadows uh, work in your application, the more immersive it's going to be. So I'm going to go through the different type of testing now. And I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Sorry, I have my <laughs> cheat sheets here. And uh, so let's, let's go through them. So the design details. Uh, I call this feature testing, and this is like any other app. So it really depends for VR what device you're using. So it's not the same to test for a phone application and for a PC application. The exactly same happen in VR, only that we have so many different devices. So if you're doing mobile tests, you can only do one click, right? So it, it will be easier to test than if you test in a headset in which you have two hands, in which you can have menus and different buttons. Um, so obviously the hardware is really, really important. Uh, also, hardware in VR are still slightly a bit, little bit expensive. So most developers will just develop for one platform and say that it won't work in the others uh, because it's very expensive to actually get the, your hands in one of other devices and test it. I'm actually very lucky in my work that we do have many devices and I can do the testing them. Um, and there's three main things that you have to test for functional um, testing in VR, which is uh, code accession, so unit tests, backend, APIs, uh, assert the components, so basically the objects that are in the screen, so what the size should have, uh, what the colors, what visibility, what is it visible, invisible, um, and also uh, assert the interaction with those objects. So. Uh, if two objects are together, should they disappear? Should they bounce? Should they collapse? Um, so the object inter interactions are very, very important for testing as well. So how can we do those testing? So in Unity, uh, well, just a little break here. I'm going to talk a lot about Unity because it's what I have more experience on. It's not the only uh, platform for doing VR. Uh, we can use uh, Unreal. There's also a web VR, so there's also things for the web. Uh, but I'm just talking about Unity because it's the one that I have more experience on. Uh, so again, uh, Unity does have testing tools uh, that are uh, for unit tests and for integration tests. And, and these testing tools, the only issue that I see on them is they are a little bit uh, written from the developer's perspective. So you can do only like small little tests. Uh, so in order to do things like end-to-end -end testing, um, we will need other sort of tools. Luckily, this is a field that is very new, so many people are working on this, but there's also a lot of room for you guys to work on that. And me, myself, I am working in, in this right now. This, uh, without making too much advertisement, this is a project that is called AirTest Project. It's done by Netis. It's open source. And uh, we have, uh, this is a cross-site um, 
cross-platform automation IDE. And we have several platforms. One of them is Unity. And right now, I'm working and making this available for VR as well. Uh, so I'm going to leave some links as well at the end of the talk for you to, to get. And uh, feel free of going there and checking it out. So in terms of performance testing, um, as I said before, the quality of the objects, the number of objects, the lighting, it's all great to get an immersive experience, but it all uh, damages the performance, right? The, the more objects you have, the more shadows, the more lights, the, the worse the performance is going to work. And it's very important for performance testing that you test in the right device. It happens to me many times when I've done uh, VR applications that they work perfectly well on the computer, and the minute I pass them to the phone, they stop working altogether. They just don't run. So uh, again, Unity has this tool, which is called the Profiler. And with this tool, you can see things like the CPU usage. I don't know if you can read it. So you can see the CPU usage, the GPU usage. There's a mem memory utilization as well. And uh, what else is uh, um, audio and, and physics. So you can test many things on performance uh, with this tool. Also, uh, apart from this, there's many other things that you should take into account in performance, just as any other app. So the memory utilization, uh, the battery utilization, uh, the network connectivity, uh, and impact, crash reports. Um, so in general, for testing this, you can use any other performance tool. And it should work uh, similar, if not the same. Also, for performance, uh, don't think that your application is going to be just in your computer. Uh, there are many applications nowadays that are being created or already created for uh, multi-user. Can you hear me well? Are you awake? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so, well, so for example, it's an application that is called VRChat. And it is basically you can select which avatar you want to have, and then you can go there and chat with other people that are dressed up like other avatars. It's a little bit like uh, the movie. Uh, so. Again, don't think that VR uh, the performance is only in your computer. So accessibility testing is very, very, very important in, in virtual reality uh, because there are some applications that are being built just for this. So there are therapeutic experiences for people that have issues. Um, and there are so many things that can be different in VR. So even just for the length of your arm, it's not going to be the same as the other person, right? So when you reach out for an object, maybe you can't reach it, even though in the test space it was fine, right? So you have to really take into account your users, the mobility on the users. Give options. Uh, for example, if you cannot use your hands, how can you click things? So one of the um, solutions that we have for that right, right now is if you look at, at an object for long enough, uh, then that means it's clicked. If you look and go back and look again, that may be a double click. Uh, so all of these are different options that you may have for your users. Uh, also in terms of audio, uh, maybe the person cannot hear well. So you, may, you have to make sure that there are subtitles and that the subtitles can be read. Don't use contracts like uh, green and red, because that could be bad for someone that is colorblinded. Um, and make sure that everything in your thing is visible for as many users as possible. And also uh, the opposite, right? So if people cannot see well, they should be able to hear well, right? So. Are the, are the sounds coming from the right sources? Can the person tell where the sound is coming from and you know, check that object? And in terms of uh, mobility, again, is, is uh, your application made for someone that is going to be walking around? Uh, do they need to duck? Do they need to be fast? Uh, do they need to balance or kneel? All of these make the testing one application from another way, way different. And as usual, this lands in the tester territory because most of the developers will just want the application to be as much immersive as possible and wouldn't think of the what ifs uh, as we do. 
So again, many sources online if you want to know more about how can you uh, have accessibility testing. There's many, many, many there's much, much information. Uh, so very quickly on these two, uh, security testing and local detection testing, they are not so far from any other applications. Um, in security testing, um, you have to take into account that these applications are usually connected. There's going to be some virtual property, and you have to be careful that there's no virtual robbery. There's crypt cryptocurrencies going on, uh, so just be careful on those. For localization, again, because we are adding dialogues and we are adding subtitles, these have to be working in all the languages that we support. So localization is also important. Why do I put them together? Well, because there's another thing, which is a digital currency, as I said before, but not only digital. Maybe you're using your country's currency, and maybe you imagine that you set up a VR shop, and people can buy things. If you have set up the price in Indian rupees, and someone is buying with dollars, that transaction has to be fine. But the other, in this case, like I think the dollar is higher, right? So it, it should be fine. For, for you, if the other person, um, the currency gets confused and is paying on dollar what costs on rupees, right? But what if, what for the other person, right? They, should, they may be paying way too much. So all of that have to be very careful. We cannot land in between security and localization. And I've seen in other apps happening. So it's, it's, again, just think about what can make the user uncomfortable or unhappy. And that's, that's the way you find how to test the app. So there's one test that is very particular of VR, and I call it VR safety testing. Um, and there's two types in, in between this. So first is the real world dangers. So basically you're gonna be in an immersive world, and you're going to be inside a physical world, right? So you can hit your hand on objects that are around you. It has happened to me many times, by the way. Maybe someone is speaking to you and you can hear that person. So what if, again, as testers, is the question we ask, what if there's an alarm, there's a fire, there's a robber in your house, there's a carbon uh, dioxide uh, issue happening, and you can't hear it because you're in your immersive world. It's super dangerous. You could actually uh, cause death with that. So there must be a way for the person to disconnect and to hear this. As I said before, the developers are going to want to get the immersive world and we are the ones that have to say, wait, what if? And the second thing that happens in virtual reality, um, as opposed to many apps, is the virtual assaults. So this is basically when you have um, uh, the possibility of getting really close to someone else. I know it's virtual, but it doesn't feel virtual. So luckily, it hasn't happened to me yet. But I have read a lot of stories about this, and I've seen it in some playthroughs as well, of people that are maybe dressed as a female, and then someone else is getting too close and pretending they're uh, touching them. So the distance of which users can be together is very important as well in VR, and we should check that it's going to be comfortable for the other person. Um, it happens a lot as well in VR chats when someone gets recognized as a famous YouTuber, for example that people just straight away go into them and pretend and play around. So this makes the person feel really uncomfortable and maybe they don't want to use our app after. So it's something very particular of VR that we should be testing. And just another thing, uh, it's not really how to test in VR, it's more about how to use VR for teaching testing. So right now, I do have an app which is like a virtual museum. It's very small. You go around and you learn a little bit about what the different type of testings exist are. Uh, but you can use VR for, for teaching testing. There's a lot of applications that are for teaching things uh, that uh, is either dangerous or very expensive to use in the real world. So we just use the VR in order to learn them. Um, one particular case uh, is very interesting is the uh, um, submarines. So apparently if you stay in the submarine for a very long time, you can get, uh, because of the pressure rise, you can get many issues. For example, you can get cross-eyed just because of the submarine. So they were thinking in applications um, like VR to do the testing for them so they can practice before being in the actual submarine. 
And I listened to this uh, in a podcast not long ago, and I was thinking, okay, great, but is it safe to be in VR for a very long time? Because the way VR works is basically you have two images a little bit split from each other, really close to your eyes. So obviously, being in VR for a very long time is also not very healthy. So we should have some reminder for the user, some first reminder of, the, of be careful, have enough space around you, and then maybe if they're using it for a very long time, remind them as well uh, to take breaks. So if you want to get into VR, I'm just going to tell you what I did to get into VR. So my first experience with VR was in an employee hackathon uh, with Microsoft. And just one of the interns, I was part of the organization, and one of the interns brought their Oculus Rift. It was, I think, the second version. It still didn't have the handset. Um, so that was my first, my first experience. And I thought, well, uh, this is really cool, but it's very expensive. People are not going to, like, you have to be really either geeky or really like games in order to buy one of these, right? But then further on, they added the handset, and that really changed things. Prices are also getting a slightly little bit cheaper. And like this, I think it cost me, I don't know in rupees how much it would be, but maybe less, for sure less than 10 euros. Just this device. It's very, they're getting very, very expensive. There's courses online on how to build them if you want to build one. It's not hard. Um, and then you can use it on your phone. Everybody has a phone nowadays that is a smartphone. They will have the gyroscope, which is what is used for that. Uh, so. That is now something that many users can, can use. Uh, other events I went to, I also attended a hackathon that was organized by NASA, in which we did AR and VR. And in this hackathon, by the way, we won the popular vote. Um, I got a little bit more feeling about how that works. I also attended another event, which was called Tech, Tech for Good in Dublin. And that's basically, they were using VR in order to test different uh, experiences and make people aware of things just by basically living those experiences through VR. So that was also very interesting. And watch online playthroughs. Again, I, I'm a little bit geeky on that sense. I like watching others play, but when you're watching people using the application or something similar to the application that you're developing, developing or testing, that really make you understand what they need, what they want, what they appreciate in this application. So it's, it's also, I think, a good thing to do. Uh, you can get into a course. Uh, I have been coursing the VR developing nano degree for a while. I find it really interesting. I learn many things. Performance, all about performance, I learned it on, on that course. You don't need to be a developer to course this. You can just uh, want to know more about VR. In, they will teach you VR, they will teach you um, how to create uh, videos. So it's, it's a very nice course, I would recommend it, but I'm sure there, there will be more, not only that one. And also play around, uh, just download some VR uh, application in your phone. If you have Android, there's the Google VR. They have many applications there. There's also a lot of applications online that you can download. You can get maybe Unity or maybe on web VR. Try to learn a little bit about that, play around, try to create an application. I just created the meeting application. Basically, I asked the organizers for pictures of this. Um, now, if you look at the uh, application, if, if you want, after the meeting, you can come over and I can show it to you. Uh, you may think, oh, it's not exactly the same. But consider that this was done with just pictures, right? From pictures, I got a VR application. So how interesting that you can do it. It, it wasn't hard, it, was, it didn't take me so long, and I got an application work, working. So how does the future of VR look like? Um, this is a picture of the Sonar um, uh, Hong Kong, which is an uh, electronic festival I went this year. Uh, in which they, they show okay, some, some other scenarios, right? So uh, they did have some olfactory VR, so basically 
you were wearing your headset and someone was spraying some things around you to get you the feeling that you're in, in a different, maybe in a forest, and then they switch, and then you get the feeling that you're in a different room. Um, so that was very interesting as well. Uh, obviously, it's hard to take to the user because how do you take the actual smells, but it's something that can happen. We are very uh, developing faster world, so it can, it can be, it can be something. And they also had this other thing. Uh, it was for snow, I think, in which the platform was moving with the girls. So they, they had this thing so you can hold it, but it's also like um, kind of uh, moving it with the wind. Uh, so the R application is not just going to stop on the handset. They're going to be platforms. They're going to be um, other materials, like uh, this, uh, like this big thing that she's holding, right? So, uh, again, any hardware device is uh, different. Uh, there are many things that are coming up, and I think it's going to be very fast. First thing that is going to happen probably is the wireless. There's already some HTC and some Oculus that are absolutely wireless, so one of the issues with the VR uh, right now, I will call it again from the VR safety, is that the wires, you can tangle with the wire, you can fell off because of them. So making them wireless is, is a really big advance. Uh, these devices all also can localize where are you in the room. So you can actually walk around without the needing of a platform. Uh, the only problem with that is that you have to have a really big room or being outside, and even so it's still dangerous because you can walk in, into the wall, for example. And there are many examples of that on the internet. If you like dark humor, you probably can search for them, and of people fell, falling off or doing crazy things because of wearing the headsets. And that's all. I've been very, very fast. I can come over and, and review other things, but do you have any questions? Please? Don't be shy. Hi. Uh, very nice presentation. Okay. Do you think uh, it's at all possible to automate any process of VR? Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah, so one of the things that I faced when I was working on this uh, air test project that I mentioned before is that there's one thing in particular different from VR than other application, which is that you don't really click on an object, you look at the object and then you click anywhere. So that's, that's something different, but it's absolutely doable. So uh, again, we, we are working on that in this project, but I know other people are also working on this, and it's absolutely doable. Yeah, but I, I was like wondering about the accuracy of something so immersive. Because uh, generally, I, I work with an application that's really static, and uh, we use Selenium and other automation frameworks exclusively because we know what's going to happen. But for something as immersive as, and particularly unpredictable as VR, uh, isn't it a great challenge to address the automation problem in, in testing VR apps? So definitely, yeah. it, there is a challenge on uh -huh. addressing automation. But it's not as, as big as you would think. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of basically the same thing. So you have, yes, you have 260 So you consider degree. the experience as an interface rather yeah, than, yeah yeah, 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 OK. So you, you have a, a 360 degrees, but you can still you know, look around. You can click objects. You can verify the object interaction. It's exactly the same as any other application. Yeah, exactly it. the same. Thank you. So follow up on that, do you use Unity to simulate all this behavior? Yeah, yeah, we're using uh, Unity for this. Okay. Uh, because uh, on, on this particular project I was talking about, we do have a Unity um, solution. So you can uh, work in games and automate games already with this. I'm just adding the VR functionality. It's very interesting. I'm really, really happy to be working there. Yeah. Uh, do we have any more questions? Take a look at. Yeah, so there are many applications online that you can, um, so again, just in case someone didn't hear him, 
He's asking if there's examples of applications. There are many examples. You can download the VR uh, uh, Cardboard uh, application for uh, Google in your Android. And in there, you'll see some applications already. You can also Google for VR web. And in VR web, it's, I think also Google has something to do with it. And you have also many, many different applications that you can connect your phone to and test. Uh, also, if you want to go a bit more deep and you want to buy a device uh, and you have the device at home, uh, you can also have the uh, applications, for example, in Steam. There are many, many, many applications and games created there. If you want to buy a device, my first advice would be uh, check if your computer is uh, powerful enough. You can do that by basically going to the website of the device that you're interested in. And they usually have uh, some download XE that you can use in your computer to check and verify that it's powerful enough. It happened to me that I tried, I wanted to, I really wanted to buy an HTC, uh, but my computer was not powerful enough. But it was powerful enough for mixed reality, so I got a Samsung device. Uh, so really, you need to be careful with that. Don't buy just a device and then you have to buy a new laptop after. Unless you want to buy a new laptop, you can also do that. Um, so yeah. If we don't have more questions, I probably have skipped some things so I can go over again. Yeah, we have time. Okay, so um, again, just uh, if there's some more questions, I'll go over this a little bit. So this is my blog, my Twitter account, my LinkedIn, my GitHub, in which I will upload the uh, meeting uh, simulation. This is the project I'm working on with NetEase. Uh, that's the Twitter, again, their, link, uh, their uh, website, and the GitHub account. Uh, and just want to leave you with a thought. So I don't know if you know about it. There's something that is called the simulation hypothesis. And that's basically what if we're already living in a simulated world. Thank you so much.